Tell me when we're ready, Amber. Bring Chris up. I'll make him do it with a, with a phone. And he can like, I might talk. No, they can't see me anymore. don't have video. Okay. Okay, but we're ready to go. Okay, good afternoon. We're sorry about the little technical difficulties we were having there, but we are about to start the meeting, the PE meeting on the 4th of June. It is 2.01 uh, in the afternoon. Beautiful day. Um, do we have any committee or public comments? Seeing a lack of abundance, we'll go to item three, dedication facilities for the East Kendall Avenue and Lou Mill Street pipelines. Who's going to lead that? That would be me. Hey, Renee. Is, is this mic working now? Yes, it is. All right. <laughs> Um, okay, so in your little packet there are the dedication documents from the developer, um, Pam Smith. She's the trustee of the Smith Family Trust, and the contractor was Moore Pipeline Construction. Installed about 660 lineal feet of 12-inch pipeline on East Kendall and about 50 feet along the mill to serve a property that's owned up there. So that Construction has been completed, passed all of our tests. We have as built, and it is ready for dedication. And the value of the facilities are $85,476. And I recommend that, that we dedicate the facilities. Okay. Um, do you need like a motion and a, and a vote? Or? Need a recommendation from the committee. Okay. I... Oh, well, I... I... <laughs> Isn't working either. Huh? Um, I would like to recommend that we accept a dedication. <laughs> okay, and I agree. Okay, thank you. And what would the uh, what would that procedure look like? What what do we have? Do we just have the general manager show up or? It goes to what do you mean? It goes to the board now. And the board uh, accepts the dedication, and then and that's it. Okay. Yep. But dedication is not like a formal facility where we show up with shovels and. No, 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 no. Yeah, all the construction is all complete and everything. Yeah. yeah, there'll be a resolution. There will be, but. Yeah. <laughs> a shovel done project. Okay. I think it's less of a ceremony and more of an acceptance of it as onto our formal books. Okay. Is that yeah. correct? That's, yeah. Correct. That's good. Okay, so that'll this will make it on to the next board meeting. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Monday? Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. Uh, nice to see that was moving along smoothly. Uh, item number four: Northwest Transmission Pipeline Replacement. Uh, at this point, we're scheduling a pre-construction meeting for the week of the seventeenth with both the contractor and with Caltrans. Um, still getting some uh, items kind of trickling in for for acceptance to, to take a look at. And then the contractor is still expecting to mobilize mid-July. So that's where we're at right now. So by the time the next board meeting comes around, hopefully we'll be, um, we'll have mobilization going on for this project. Okay. Awesome, looking forward to that. Did, did it, we ever decide if we were gonna have a groundbreaking? I did make the request. Um, and I have not received or heard anything back from uh, Senator Grove's office yet, and I have sent a second request to see okay. if they want to do it. Okay. It, it's. I mean, I could always do one without her, but it's really hot. So I'm thinking, thinking when it cools down and we're completed, we may do a, a ribbon cutting ceremony to open it up. That might be. That, that might make. Good. That might be a good idea. Might sense, make right? more sense. A ribbon cutting or something. Yes, sort of like as a, opposed it's, to a groundbreaking. Yes, yes, as sort of a finish the product yeah. project as opposed to yeah. initiating the project. Well, whatever our guest of honor wants. Yes, yeah. that, that was the way it was presented. We're just, uh, I know Senator Grove is, is quite busy at this time. Yeah, and it sure. is an election season. So, I mean, yep. this could work in her favor if she had that ceremony before November. So, correct. I think. I think she's not on the ballot. This she's not on the ballot. Okay. I believe, but I believe she's gearing up for a run for 
another office. I can't remember exactly what it was. Board of Equalization. Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know when that's uh, going to occur. But was it was uh, it the Board of Equalization? It was. Yeah. Why isn't that at the same time? I I don't know if it's this term. Maybe she's just gearing up for the next term. I I, I don't. Oh. I haven't followed close yeah, enough. Like you're not running for re-election this time, but yeah, but Ron and I are, and Chuck are. Yeah. So I think I think it might be that her election isn't for two and a half years. That that she's oh. just gearing up for it at this point in time. Okay. Okay. Whatever's right. Okay. Dune three in hometown water consolidations. All right. Just to give you a quick update that all the paperwork has been provided to the state, uploaded to their system. It's called the FAST system, F-A-A-S-T, Financial Assistance Application Tool System. So as far as I know, everything has uh, been submitted and they are expecting to have the formal agreements with the state ready by the end of July. So that's where we're at. Okay. Is, is there anything going on with the GA with regard to any other consolidations? I mean, not at this point. They've got money, but I'm but I'm curious whether or not they're actively I, I asked pursuing a question something. at our last uh, staff meeting where they were getting ready for the next board agenda and they it was low on their priority list and they mm -hmm. haven't done anything. And I think uh, Renee, you said you've been in some contact they, with them. They as do well. have an engineer working on it, but they want to kind of build on the back of I believe the Dune 3 system. So until that gets installed. She's asked me to just keep her up to date on the progress on that one. Um, until that one's installed, they're not going to have anything, I don't think, to install. Maybe Rademacher, possibly. But as far as out in the China Lake Acres area, I think they want to build upon what we're building for Dune 3. Yeah, I, I guess I just want to make sure that, that when they decide to do something, I mean, they've got the money, mm -hmm. and, and we want to make sure it doesn't run out, that it's consistent with what we are anticipating in out years, if possible. Yeah, I don't think there's any um, lack of willingness or effort to uh, continue our dialogue with them on our part. So we've been asking the questions and uh, waiting for them to. They've been asking us. us questions and we've been giving answers. So, yeah. so it's, it's moving along. It's just. Yeah. Okay. I've provided them plans and everything well, for the consolidation. Well, like I said, they got money. <laughs> so we want to make sure it's used to the maximum benefit. And if it should help us, that's just all that much better. Yeah, I think it, hopefully it helps the whole basin. Okay, uh, item number six, La Mirage housing area. This had been on our, you know, future agenda item. So I wanted to let you know, I did have an update on this because I asked the state representative that I've been working with on the Dune 3 in hometown um, about possible funding for this type of project. She said, well, as a matter of fact, we have a special pot of funds that might be available in the next few years uh, for systems that have been participating in consolidations. And the new project does not have to have anything to do with a consolidation. So she recommended that I go ahead and put in a, um, what they call a general package application uh, as soon as we have the consolidations agreements signed. And then that kind of gets us on the list for applying for funds for planning for that project. So we can start the planning phase. Okay. So. Yeah. Sounds like good news. Potentially yeah. good news. Yeah. Potentially good news. She said we should get our name in, get our project description in, and they, she's expecting there'll be funds within a few years for that. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for that. Mm -hmm. uh, arsenic treatment facilities. Plant two is, is online. At, but operating at half capacity. Um, we did receive the media from Filtronics, which is for plant two. However, we cannot take it offline. We need the, the water production currently. So we are still waiting for Pure Flow to deliver their media, which should be, according to my conversation with Ruben from Pure Flow last week, delivered in you said then two and a half weeks so two weeks from now so when we get that we're going to try to get plant one online and operational once we have that the plan is probably to, to run both plants until 
or get to a point where we can take plant to offline again and, and install the media there. Okay. And you said that'll likely happen. What if the media gets here in two weeks, does it, how long does it take to? <laughs> so it's a process. So we, we got to load the media, you know, make sure that it's level, uh, do disinfection there. there so it's, it's going to be a couple of weeks after the media is loaded before we, we actually get online. Okay. It's probably about a month then. Yeah. Okay. Is what it is. Okay. Future agenda items. I was curious. I don't know about a future agenda item or not, but something that wasn't mentioned was the um, pipeline break that we had oh, yeah. last week or whenever it was fairly recently. What's the status on that? Uh, the the main line is repaired. Um, it looks like that the rubber on a coupling is an AC line. Uh, the rubber had worn a hole, and then the pipe itself finally gave way and so it was it was it was about 183,000 gallons worth of water loss that was what the heck's that that was going uh right at the uh, uh the residence which is on the corner there so uh, the main line is back in service there, nobody was out of water for any length of time uh, maintenance job did a, an excellent maintenance did an excellent job of getting everybody back in service quickly can everybody turn off their microphone for a second and see if that annoying noise goes away? I can't even turn mine off. Hold on. Hello. Can I ask a question? So you just have. Yeah. <laughs> the answer is yes. Go ahead, I, I had trouble getting in on the audio and everything. And I know I didn't log on twice, but for some reason I logged on twice and I was getting an echo. So I had to get out of one of these windows or whatever anyway i missed the northwest transmission pipeline report not a lot to tell you right now we're just scheduling our pre-construction meetings with the contractor and caltrans um here in a couple weeks and they still expect to mobilize mid-july when you say mobilize what does that mean that means a contractor will be bringing in equipment and material and start doing the work so they're actually going to be breaking ground in July? In July, yes. And then is this going to take a whole year? Should not take a whole year, no. Do you have like a six rough? months? Six months. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Any other questions from? Uh... Um, we we um, have been talking in the past about hiring a contractor to inspect the quality of our pipelines and he that contractor apparently had needed a tool yeah. or something that is on our future agenda yes the transmission pipeline inspection okay yes. would we just don't would have the money that for it tool have found the the leak that we just had Oh no, this is only one we've been discussing discussing is only for our transmission pipelines, the large pipelines. The okay. one the leak you just had was a pipeline put in the ground. It's as old as I am. So it's, you know, 54 at least years old. So it's been in the ground a while. So those things do, you know, happen. That's only a six inch pipeline. So we're not going to be putting um, you know, cameras in all our pipelines all over town. Just the the large one is the ones we want to take care of. Okay. It is it is a pipeline that probably should show up on a replacement plan. Yeah. But but no, the the inspection tool will not have found that mm -hmm. issue. Okay. Well, the, the the plan that we well not plan the the plan we had to plan for uh, trying to test or evaluate assess whatever you want to say uh, the transmission lines. Is there money in the budget for next year? to I don't believe so. actually get that contractor to inspect or test those particular lines that not at this time yeah we couldn't fit it into the budget this next year okay i i guess i we would love to you know we we, we had that one transmission line coming from in your current 
uh, on Try to Lake, not Try to Lake, Indian Kern Road. And I, it, it, quite frankly, it scared me uh, when, when it just sort of happened. And I was optimistic that we were going to actually have a, a solution to that problem, that we would be able to identify possible leaks. And uh, I guess I would maybe when it comes to talking about the budget, we could talk about how much that was going to cost and, and why it's not in the budget. And, and what's the risk of not having it in the budget is really the issue. Yeah, and uh, we went through some pretty extensive uh, budget reviews and, and you'll get presented a draft budget and there were there were things that fell below the the funding line uh, for this year uh, doesn't mean they won't get done uh, at some point in the future but uh, uh, they're just not there today so um, that's a that, that's a good discussion um, I think we're going to have a I would like to schedule in our July um, sort of more lengthy meeting as sort of a, a more detailed run through the budget so I'd, I'd probably defer those kind of discussions and until we have our, our board workshop in July. Is that okay? Yeah. Well, I I don't even know how much that costs. I mean, so, I mean, it'd be nice for the board to know that, and that's, the fundamental stuff. Don't want to go into too much detail. Yeah, and, and I think some of those things will be included. There's going to be, a, you know, as part of that uh, board workshop, there'll be some wish list items that'll have sort of numbers penciled in and dollar figures and say, these are things we'd love to do, but maybe we can't afford them right now. And Oh, you know, we have, we have a lot of things. Down. I have a hunch, but yeah. it's, it's going to be a long list. But you know, it's a you, you can't do everything you want to do. I mean, we uh, right. but uh, we're, we're we're certainly um, we're, we're certainly going to give you a, a pretty. You know, I've already talked to Ty about giving a pretty thorough briefing to the board about what's in and what's out at the, at the okay. July workshop. And then just just for further information, Justin, the associate engineer, put together kind of the cost estimate for that tool and the inspection, and it was coming in around $800,000. Oh, okay, so it's real oh, money. Okay, so not insignificant yeah. at all. Okay. But we could well, put that into the yeah, rate I mean, study. And yeah, it's, I guess you got to put it in the priorities with everything, you know, when we rack and stack and look at the priorities. And, and while we're on for future agenda items, there's, there, there is one thing, we have a regulatory deadline coming up sometime in October that we have to have finished a, uh, a uh, what is it, lead and copper sampling. Mm -hmm. Lead it? service line inventory. Lead service line inventory. So we're going to start giving you guys some updates on that. Um, we've had some correspondence with the with the regulators. Uh, obviously, we report we owe them that uh, that report. Is it October? October twenty fourth, I believe. October twenty fourth, and um, there's a possibility we have to send, send out some notices if we don't get a hundred percent complete. Uh, we actually have to send some notices, and people say like, "Well, we were supposed to be done," and we'll. But uh, we we think we're going to try to work and get a plan to. To get all of those things right we've, we've done a large number of them but uh we're you know with all the work that we're doing and uh you know budget constraints we'd love to just go hire a contractor and say hey go out and do it but that's that's not in the budget either so we're gonna yeah. we're well, gonna we just figure have that to stuff do the out. best prioritizing we can and yeah and and hope we're right um but you good segue you were talking about the july workshop and i had mentioned i think it was the last board meeting I'd like to see a staff discussion on the water losses that is difference between our pumping and our distribution and and have some discussion on what what we are doing to try to mitigate uh, that is to the extent practical or possible. Yeah, so I, I, I think we've actually already started down that path. We've had a lot of uh, interesting internal discussions about, you know, no, nothing super dramatic, but uh, uh, we've been looking at some, uh, the cost effectiveness of getting meters that read far more accurately at low flow. So you imagine like in the middle of the night, you've got a swamp cooler running and it's barely trickling water into the swamp cooler is, is the meter capturing those really low flows? Uh, the, the potential is maybe not. And so we're, we're looking at some meters that do a much better job at these very low flow rates, oh, we have small leaks, so you, you can catch that lower end of it. And uh, we're looking to maybe, um, I think Jason talked about looking at scheduling over 20 years, replacing our current uh, our current mechanical meters, which require mm -hmm. you know, bearings and pieces that move. And those things inevitably, when they read, they, they they slow down. It's like any bearing or anything that spins or is mm -hmm. mechanical over time, it gets slower. So you end up reading low. You very rarely see a meter that reads high. The newer meters have no moving parts. 
Um, but like, so we're doing a, a cost analysis on, on that piece of it. Um, we're looking at some other little, little pieces of it, but uh, it's certainly something we're, we're spending some time on. You'll get a full report on where we're at uh, at that meeting. Yeah. Well, my, my napkin analysis sort of looked like the meters would have to be off by eight or 10 percent to justify the the numbers that we're seeing which is quite a bit yeah and there's i guess it's one of the things we almost have to do is is you have to shift so i'm trying to figure out how to do this in excel you have to shift the month that you produce because the when we report for oh november we're recording the, the amount we use in November, but the amount we're parting is the month before. So you, you almost have to shift it over a month or some period of time to get the production to oh, even reasonably oh yeah. line up. Synchronize your, your data for sure. Yeah, so that's a that's a bit of an issue we're at trying a, to work on before we- yeah. Or one month, you know, that could be significant, but over a year's time, it seems to me that some of that synchronization would kind of start to, be less uh, yeah. important. Yeah. So, so we're trying to get that, and you know, and our numbers are not that bad. You know, we're I at, know that some of the meters that that Ty's crew has pulled out when they were tested tested anywhere from forty to sixty percent accuracy. Now, I'm not saying that's the norm, but I mean that's probably some of the those were ones installed in the seventies. Yeah, but I I don't doubt for a minute that some of the older ones are testing at least ten percent off. Yeah, um, I mean we assumed five percent of our residential meters being inaccurate. Yeah. Yeah, well, so somebody time. saved a lot of money. Yeah, there are people in our, that's why, that's why we're talking about, you know, these new meters come with sort of a 20 year yeah. warranty and, and then sort of getting on a schedule where we're replacing with these yeah. meters that typically shouldn't degrade over time. And, you know, that, yeah. that, that just puts us in a position where we're doing our very best to not, not only keep up with our sustainment, but replacing meters in a timely manner. And, and you know, the, the staff yeah. is doing a, an amazing job. I kind of, we brought this subject up and they have been, uh, diligently looking at it and, and making okay. sure we're well, doing everything we need to do. Let's save the discussion for the workshop. I don't want to make, I know you, you've got other things to do today. So, yeah. um, so and that was all I, okay. Well, we seem to have reached the end here. So we'll call the meeting at the 2.23. Thank you for all your help, and insights. We'll see you next month. I'll see you later tonight. Safe oh, yes. <laughs>